All right, guys, I got a new fixed gear bike. I just want to show you really quickly. Interesting thing about this bike is it is very similar to the very first Fixie I had. I think it was like 15 or 20 years ago. I made that one. That was a Raleigh record frame. This is a Raleigh Grand Prix. One concern I have, I'll show you that in a minute, and I'll just kind of show you real quickly the specs of this bike. It's nothing fancy. And ultimately I bought this bike for the parts because I'm, I'm looking for a nicer frame, but now I've got basically an entire fixed gear drivetrain. And if you don't know what a fixed gear is, the rear hub is locked. So if the wheels are moving, the pedals are moving. You can't coast, you can't freewheel. You could also pedal backwards in theory. It takes a lot of skill, but you can do that. I'll just show you this bike real quick. So here it is in all its glory. I paid 200 bucks for this bike on local classifieds, and that's kind of the part that I'm the most excited about. The wheels are kind of a generic uh, Amazon fixed gear wheel set. Here we have the track cog and then the locking ring. So this is what uh, kind of makes a specific fixed gear. You thread your track cog on, and then there's a smaller thread and that's what the lock ring goes on and it actually threads the opposite direction so it can lock them in place if you want to swap these out more teeth less teeth is great just undo your locking ring under your track cog and then this hub in particular is called a flip-flop on the other side we've just got this threading here for a freewheel. This is the same thread as the track cog, but there's no way to lock it. So what a lot of folks will do is they'll actually, uh, you can actually get the, let's say through the 16 tooth track cog, you can put a 16 tooth freewheel. Then depending on your mood, you can just undo your tire, flip it back and forth. You can coast and not coast. This one, I won't be doing that because this one has no brakes. <laughs> Use basically, you resist the, the, the momentum of the pedals to brake. And that's how you break with this one. Now, I'm gonna put a couple of pictures of the screen of my first Fixie compared to this Fixie. It's kind of crazy how similar these are. Uh, this first Fixie bike that I have was one that I did myself. I stripped the paint down. I actually found the bike in a dumpster and I painted it like a metallic pewter bronze kind of a color. And then this bike right here, uh, the gentleman that had it, he actually just hand sanded the frame. So it's a bare metal frame that he clear coated. The one concern I have with this frame is right here you see this little crook right here i don't think it's supposed to be there but i don't know for sure i've measured it on both sides and it's very even pictures that i find of this bike have straight seat stays not this little bend in here so that part kind of makes me think maybe it was involved in a minor little little fender bender or something i'm not sure nice lugs on this frame and then obviously we've got nice uh, horizontal dropouts so this is a good candidate for single speed lots of room for adjustment there the drivetrain i'm running right now is 45 16. when this thing came to me it actually had a front brake but it was like a really old vintage diacomp piece of junk it was kind of like a wet noodle it didn't it wasn't very rigid at all so i just took it off he had flat bars on here so I swapped it out to these Richie Venture Max. Don't know if they're gonna stay, I'm not entirely sure. And then I put in this one inch quill stem to one and an eighth adapter so that I could run a modern stem. And the nice thing with a brakeless fixie is that I could get other stems with other handlebars and you know it's just so easy to swap out different options depending on the riding you're doing. This thing came with a 700 by 23 tires and I put these 700 by 35 cyclocross tires on. These are actually what came on my son's Surly Crosscheck. And then we put the 700 by 42 Surly Extraterrestrials on his. I actually bought those tires for this, but I didn't have the clearance. You can see we're pretty tight in there. We've got maybe an eighth of an inch here at this chain stay. And that's the tightest spot. We've got tons of room up here, uh, quite a bit of room at the fork. I also don't think this fork was kind of meant to be with this bike. I don't know, I could entirely be wrong, and I, I don't really know the history of the, the Raleigh Grand Prix, but that doesn't look like the fork that would have come on this bike. It looks pretty cheap. The castings are kind of ugly there. I'm not sure. I always thought the Raleigh had some nicer stuff than this, but I do not like how this is chrome. The rest of the bike is just bare metal. I think it looks a little bit silly. Again, you know, I've got these parts on here and I'm looking for a good fixed gear frame. I also put a new seat post in, complete with a LaCroix uh, shim in there. This is from La LaCroix coconut water <laughs> can, and uh, I need to actually get the right post. But the nice thing with this frame, this here measures from the center of the bottom bracket to the top of the top tube is 63 centimeters. So this is like an extra large size frame and it fits me like a glove. Like, like this is dialed in how it's supposed to be and the old adage with diamond frames was a fistful of seat posts, right? Like if you've got a good sized frame, you should have about a fistful of seat posts sticking up 
and this is perfect. It's a fairly light frame just because there's not much on. You know, it's not a whole lot of stuff going on to it. The hardest part I have when I'm looking for used bicycles is finding ones that are big enough. I get a lot of comments about my Karate Monkey that that bike is too small, and yes and no, it is a size large. I'm like 6'2", but I've got longer legs, and I like I like to ride bigger bikes. When I bought my Karate Monkey, large was all they had, and to get an extra large, they didn't know how long it would be. So that's why I bought that. But even if I had an extra large, you still have a massive amount of seat posts sticking out on that bike, and that's just the design of the bike. Even if I had an extra large, I know people would be saying that bike's way too small for you. Um, generally, I, I don't think it is. That bike is not too small for me. Uh, look at anybody that rides Karate Monkeys, that's like over 5'8", and they've got a lot of seat posts sticking up. It's just kind of how that bike is designed. But this bike fits me like a gem. I also added some, some pedals, some clipless pedals uh, with the SPD so I can lock in. Lock into the pedal there, which I really like on a fixed gear, uh, especially when you don't have brakes, you know, then I can use, oh, I'm gonna fall over here. Um, way nicer to be rigidly locked into the bike and then obviously when you want to get out you just twist ultimately i don't really need brakes on my bike because i'm not like riding in traffic it's not like there's going to be a, a cow jump in the middle of the gravel road that i have to stop right now the one reason i might like brakes and that brakes might find their way onto here is for downhills i've got a couple of big hills here i don't remember what it's like to uh to ride down a really steep hill. I know it's kind of a pain because either you have to just spin like a chicken honker or you gotta like, eh, you're fighting it the whole time. Depending on how my knees feel after riding this for a while, I might end up putting some brakes on here. But I just wanna share this with you guys. This is a new project. Ultimately, the way I would like this to go is for all these parts to go into a better frame, like a Surly Steamroller if I could find one. Um, but I am really just excited to have a fixed gear bike. Excellent for wintertime riding, um, a lot of fun, you know, low maintenance, low hassle. I mean, just, just look at this thing. You can't get more bare bones and simple of a bicycle than this. A wonderful machine, you go from A to B, you can enjoy the trip, enjoy the scenery, but you don't take forever getting there. Love this thing. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. Hopefully you can get on your bicycles, get outside walking, get outside in nature, enjoy this wonderful life that we all live, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.